Hello and welcome to class activity number 22. So today we are going to install and, cover and configure a DHCP server. So we are going to set the domain controller, set it uh, the role as a DHCP server. What is the DHCP server? It is the server that leases the source IP address that every device needs to be able to communicate. So when your computer comes in, they are going to send a broadcast message, discover, looking for a DHCP server. Then hopefully the DHCP server is there. They will give you an offer. And then when you get the offer, the client will send a request requesting that offer. And then the, uh, the server will acknowledge that, re uh, that request and then will assign you the IP address the uh, the mask the default gateway and most likely they'll give you also what the, what the dns server is going to be so the dhcp server is the one that gives out the source ip address we configured the dns server prior to, previously and that was the one that assigns the um, the destination ip address according to the names that you give all right so let's see how we can set up the dhcp server but before we do any of that open up class activity number 22 so you can put your screenshots at the bottom and um, so before we boot up any of the servers like i told you last time i want to increase the memory on the client and the domain controller so before you uh, boot them up highlight the client go to setting go to system and move the base memory to 2048. So just move this bar over. All right, so I have two gigs of RAM. That's good. Because they're running slow. I noticed that they were running very slow and the memory when we checked the task manager was at its max. So let's um, look at the domain controller, click system and make sure it's two gigs of RAM. All right, beautiful. And let's boot up the domain controller first and log in as, as an administrator. All right, so we'll come back when this boots up. Okay, so let's log in. We'll go to input, keyboard, control all delete, and we're gonna log in as the administrator with I love server 2022. All right, so when we boot it up, we need to go to the server manager. All right, so let's wait. All right, open up the server manager. It's gonna take a little bit, but it's okay. See, it's, it's moving much quicker, right? Because we increased the memory. All right, we're gonna add roles and features. That's what we're gonna do. Well, let it let it finish, but let's uh, let's not rush this and run into problems. Okay, so click on. By the way, you can always go to manage. By the way, and add roles and features, and you can remove roles and features from there too if you want to. All right, but let's go from here. Click on add roles and features. Click on next. It's a role based. Click on next. We are doing it on the domain controller. Click on next. And we want the DHCP. So click on that box. Click on add features. All right. Click on next. Next. All right, the dynamic host world server, blah, blah, blah. So we should know, you know, things to note about the, you getting IP addresses, but we'll talk about that when we're configuring. Click on next. All right, click on the box that it needs to restart when you need to. Click on yes, and click on install. Take a picture of this, and we'll come back when the installation finishes. Okay, when you're done with your screenshot, you can close this. 
All right, we will go up here where the notification is, and it's going to say complete the DHCP configuration. All right, so let's click on that. Move this over. All right, click on next. It says you want the administrator to authorize it. Correct means start giving out IP address. He's the one. Of course we will. So click, take a picture of this. By the way, you can set somebody else to do it, or you can skip the authorization for now. But let's let's commit. All right, and close. We're done. The server is ready to go. All right. So um, let's go to tools, and you should have a DHCP, and there it is. Click on it. Let me expand this a little bit. Now we're going to configure the DHCP server. Well, let me bring this up a little bit bigger so we can have more fun. All right. Expand the server on this domain controller. Expand the IPv4. We're going to do IPv4. All right. And we are going to go in there, and I want you to now. Once we get in there, I want to right click on the IPv4 and we're going to create a new scope. New scope means you're going to tell the server to give it the pool of IP addresses that it's going to give out, right? So that's called the scope. Click on next. The name of the scope, let's give it. Um, NOS network operating system. I don't know. I said it. Whatever. No description. Just let's call it NOS. That's the name of it. Oh no, no, no. You know what? It's the XYZ. The XYZ. Um that's it. The XYZ. Um, users like that. Yeah, that's the name. Of it. That's fine. <laughs> you can make up any name you want. All right, let's say the starting address is 192.168.10. And we're going to start with starting at number 50. And we are going to end with 192.168.10.1. Right? We'll make it 250. So we have 200 IP addresses, right? From 50 to 250 is going to be given out. So the first person that's going to come in, he's going to get dot 50. The second guy will get dot 51 and so on. So you, to the last one, dot 50, dot 250. Has slash 24. That's the match they're going to get. 255s and a zero. All right. Now, excluding address, which address you do not want to give? Well, we know that 192.168.10.100 is the domain controller static IP address. So we do not want to, we do not want the server to give out this IP address. So we want to exclude it. So exclude 192.168 dot 10 dot 100 right so let's add that you can add a range of exclusion but just we only have one ip address just the one the 100 we want to make sure nobody gets it because we already have a static ip address that's already been given to the domain controller all right click on next now how long do you want this ip address to be given to a host um Eight days, that's a little too much. If you have users that are coming in and out using their um, devices, you know, Internet of Things, somebody may bring in their laptop and, you know, remote users coming in and out. So eight days is too much. So let's make it eight hours. So we'll put the days to zero, increase the hours to eight. This is really for... 
laptops. And if it's a desktop and it's going to be on the whole time, you can give it for 24, you know, eight days. That means it will not be able to give out that IP address. So what happens is, you know what? Let's make it one day. Uh, make this zero. And make this one day, 24 hours. So when you get the IP address, you're going to get it for 24 hours. After 12 hours, the client has to go in and say, I want to renew my IP address. And then the server will say, okay, keep it for another 24 hours. If you don't come back within, after 24 hours asking for your renewal, then the server will relinquish that IP address, put it back in the pool so someone else can get it. That's why you are leasing an IP address. You don't get it permanently. All right, so 24 day, 24 hours, click on next. All right, uh, do you want options? Sure, why not? Click on next. Uh, the default gateway, let's make it 192.168.10.1. All right, so although we don't have an, uh, a router that takes us out to the internet, but if we do, that, that would be its IP address. So the first host is going to get 192.168.10.50. It's going to get a mask of three 255s and a zero. It's going to get um, a default gateway of 192.168.10.1, right? And maybe we'll give them a DNS server. And the DNS server is 192.168.10.100, right? So we'll get that too. That's already been given. Um, we don't have to add anything else in there. Like next. Uh, Wins servers, if we don't have any Wins servers, this is the old Windows internet servers with names, uh, that bars, this is old stuff. Forget about it. Click on next. Do we want to activate the scope so it starts to lease addresses immediately? Yes. Click on next. And click on finish. And take a picture. There is your scope. In fact, span this. Span the pool. And there is your IP. Take a picture of this. Okay? So... There you go. All right, so once that's done, now we are going to boot up the, the, the client and see if he gets the 192.168.10.50, right? So let's go in. Let's go back to here, the virtual box, and boot up the client. We, go, we need to set it up, uh, set him up as a DHCP because he has a static IP address, I remember. All right, let's boot him up first, and we'll come back after he boots up. You see how fast they boot up? Because we increased the memory, right? All right, so let's go to input, and let's log in. Um, let's log in with the administrator. That's fine. I love server 20. And we need to reconfigure the NIC so it's set up for a DHCP, right? All right, to do that, let's go to the server manager. We'll do it from in there. All right, let's go to the configure this local server. All right, you see it's a static IP address. Let's click on the Ethernet NIC right there. It has the 10.6, right? And so we're going to change it to automatically. And he's going to contact the DHCP server and get his .50, right? Double click on the NIC. Go to Properties. Double click on the TCP IPv4. And... Check it right here. Take a picture of this. This is how you set up your device to get an IP address from the DHCP server. Obtain an IP address automatically. All right, so once you uh, take in your screenshot, click OK. 
Click OK. Close. Let him close. He's trying to contact the DHCP server. That's fine. See, he's identifying, he's connecting. But oh, we can close it. We don't need that. And um, so here, let me see if I can get still identifying. We're going to right click on the start menu and we're going to do the All right, it looks like it's frozen. So I can't do anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut it down from here and uh, power off the machine. If you ever need to do that, don't choose any of the other options. So completely shut it down. All right, so let's shut it down and we'll boot it back up. We'll see what happens. Okay, so now let's log in. Remember, I'm on the client. Client of server 2022. All right, we need to verify that he is connected. So let me go to run, right click, go to run because I don't know, and type CMD. I'm going to type IP config. And there you go. 192.168.10.50 is the IP address, right? And he's being given. This, the mask is 32550, and, and the default gateway is one. Take a picture of this. And we are connected to the xyz.local. Here is your link, local IPv6 address. All right, so take a screenshot. That proves that this guy went out and got an IP address. If you have another PC, it will, be, it will get dot .50, and everything else will be the same. All right, if we go back to the domain controller, all right, you can check the, let's look at the leases. You click on the leases and take a picture of this. So this guy was leased this IP address and that's his name, when, right? And so on, take a picture of this, right? You can check out your reservation, which we don't even have one. Reserve means, um, which IP address you want to make sure that is reserved. So for example, the printer, you want to give it 192.168.10.150. Okay, we didn't set it up, but we could do that so that every time if the printer goes down, it comes back up, it will be given 192.168.10.50. All right, so let's create a new reservation. Right click on it, go to new reservation, and uh, call it printer and give it the dot 150. So this IP address will always be given. The MAC address of this device, let's say it's AA, BB, 22334455, right? Because it's a hexadecimal number, 48 bits. Okay, no description, that's it, closed. And there's your reservation for the printer. So every time device that has AABB, blah, blah, whatever I wrote, which is the printer MAC address that you can get, will always be getting this IP address. Take a picture of that. And that is the end of this lab. So I will see you on the next class activity. The next two class activities, we're going to go back and do some GPOs, right? group policy objects. All right, I'll see you then.